All right, so picks and bans already starting, Deficio, and with Giants on the red side. Giants as a team... How surprising, though. I know, but they don't necessarily have the strongest of first pick champion pool. So being a red side could benefit them having two picks in, across multiple games. Yeah, I think this is one of the reasons we see Giants decide to go on red side, because as you mentioned here, Giants as a team has not really favored first pick and Kalista too often because Adri is not the main carry on the team. And it could be difficult that, you know, Kalista was left open, they didn't want to take it, gave it two strong picks over to second rotation. Same for Ryze in the top lane. It's not been the strongest pick for Whirlip. So I think that's why they're happy taking red side, saying we get a First of all, a last pick for either Pepinel or Willip. And then we take two of the strong picks in the first rotation because there's nothing we really want that badly as a single first pick. Also, Jax Morgana, we're expecting that for quite a lot of games. H2K banning that against him. And just about to talk about this Thresh with the Morgana ban, and then he locks it in because this champion would be the go-to option for Godfred. First of all, to take it away from Kasing. Second of all, because Giants rely a lot on having Godfred on a champion where he can create some picks. That is the Thresh. We know it's a main pick for Kassing. So I'm not really surprised to see it as a as an first pick, even though it's not considered normally, you know, the first pick worthy champions. Well, for Kassing, seven games played six and one on that Thresh, Deficio. You mentioned the Jax and the Morgana bands. They are the most banned champions against Giants. This is the 17th Jax ban in 20 games in summer. So that's the regular 18 split games, the tiebreaker, and now the first in this best of five. Now, let's uh, keep talking about what Giants wants to build, because we just mentioned how they would get two picks. Elise has been banned away. That means Nidalee, which a lot of people will consider tier one with the Elise at the moment. Obviously, he's going over to Giants. This is what H2K is sacrificing with this pick, but Gragas and Rek'Sai are still good jungle choices. Echo is up there as well. There are a lot of great junglers at the moment. You don't necessarily have to ban them away, except for maybe the Elise. Nidalee, Corky though. Giants as a team, seven out of eight games, they have won in the summer split, has been with a poke composition, or at least with Pepe Nero on a poke champion, and often Atri as a support in that case, is supporting with poke or just tower damage. Corky will fit in perfectly, he needs it. To also start avoiding some of these dives H2K will unleash on. Okay, Lee Sin despite so many other great jungles being available. And that's the first Lee Sin of the split for Lulex. We are playing on patch 514, as a reminder to everybody at home, so it's one patch behind live. Hyanan will get his hands on Tristana, only the second time this split. And for H2K, already got some disengage, they've got some peel and protection for this Tristana. Well, let's see how their solo laners add out in this next round. Yeah, the thing about Lee Sin is, finally he's back in a in a meta where he can obviously go warrior enchant and try and match some of these early junglers here. We have seen a few Lee Sin players try Cinderhulk, you know, a few patches ago to try and match a bit of the scaling of like Rex or Gragas. It didn't work out too well. You didn't have you didn't have enough of a late game presence simply. Now you can go warrior enchant because there's more early game junglers and you can try and match the Nidalee. So uh, Lulex definitely looking to track Frederick around here and try and stop the possible early pressure we can get from an Italy. And that'll be a little bit of a change in style for Giants Gaming. We heard the analyst, uh, analyst there talking about how Giants are behind 12 out of their 19 games by 20 minutes. And you can't really afford to do it. You shouldn't be in that position with a Nidalee and a Corky. But that's a lot of magic damage on the side of Giants. We'll see what Whirlib's going to run up in that top lane to round out the comp. Yeah, standard though for Giants, except for the fact Pepinero is not on a necessary like full poke champ. Instead, the reason he's locking in Victor is it's so safe you can pick it blind, meaning Whirlip could get the last pick to see what was being played up top lane. It is the Shen for Odo Amna, obviously a champion he used against Giants in week 8 and it was fantastic. HK simply just set up tower dives after dives against Archery because he was, he was on a Jinx. Changes though from Giants, they've adapted to champ select here. You have mobility now in your AD carry. You have good early wave clear from it, especially once you hit level six. You have poke coming in. We have this very traditional 1-4 setup for Giants, where we have the trundle in the top lane split pushing, that is Whirlip. And then you have the other four members together as a unit around objectives and poking down sieging towers. If there was ever a Giants style team composition, it is this. Last time we saw that trundle was with Yellow Star playing it in the support role. To help for Echo 18 to know may have inspired Whirlib. May not. We will find out. This is a reminder, it's 514. It's the first time we've seen LCS teams playing on this patch. Yeah. Challenge has been on it all week though. And LCK has also been playing 514. We've seen a lot of Elise over there. Otherwise, 
Still a lot of the same champions, honestly. A lot of the same champions with picks and bands lock in. It's time to kick off the 2015 European LCS Summer Playoffs. Being the underdog really helps. That lets you play like more relaxed and without so much pressure. I, I don't think we've ever underestimated them. We've still given our best for every game. S2K is a team that when you give them an early lead, they will snowball it. The way we practice coming into playoffs is going to be a lot easier for us to overcome any challenge. It's a really hard game against HK for sure. It's time for the quarterfinals in the European LCS Summer Split. Third seed H2K taking on the sixth seed Giants. Giants have not beaten H2K a single time in the last seven times they played. Will this be the series that Giants turns their fortunes around and tries to make a bid for the World Championships? Well, one of the main reasons Giants have lost to H2K in the past is that they simply cannot avoid falling behind in the early to mid game. Adri just said if you fall behind to H2K, they are fantastic at snowballing that lead. Giants, we saw from the analyst desk, on average at 20 minutes, is down 2,000 gold. That is not acceptable if you want to beat H2K. Obviously, very standard from them as well. We didn't talk too much about the composition in Champ Select. You have the Shen, the fantastic early to mid game, the Ari to create the picks from Ryu. His uh, champion pool is a little bit different from what we see from certain other Midlands. He really likes that Ari, where he can have an impact, he can roam around the map. Yana and Andir. New pick. <laughs> we can save the Tristan even though it's not new at all. I want to see how he does into the 2v2 lane of Janna Koki because I personally don't like Tristan that much into Janna. I think it's super annoying with the early trades due to the shield. But it's not a terrible lane at all. Well, Hyonin and Kasing, one of the better duo lanes here in Europe, consistently stepping up and helping to carry H2K. But I do want to mention that some of the weaknesses that we had seen from Giant's drafting phase over the last few weeks seems to be a little more together, this game. They definitely learned from last time where they face, uh, faced H2K, where it was like first pick rise, then you went for Jinx later on. Extremely immobile composition versus H2K, who shines at applying map pressure in the mid game. They often like to run these compositions with Shen, with Alistar, early aggressive junglers where you can set up tower dives with multiple members coming down. If you're sitting on a Jinx on the tower, 15 minutes in and four guys walked in to kill you, there's nothing you can do. Notice here the Whirlip taking the red buff for himself, sharing XP with the Frederick also. Notice how Whirlip is often tanking a lot of the damage because he can always go back to base anyway and then for you save a potion on your jungle and he can be more healthy for the first gank. And while that's going on, the two energy users from HTK up in the top half, we catch a glimpse of Godfred and Adri. They are alone in the bottom lane. H2K, their duo lane is up top, so you can see a contrast in the stats for support. Both supports also coming in to improve both H2K and Giants' abilities throughout the 2015 season. So kind of surprising they gave Whirlip the red buff, seeing as it is a lane swap and he's not really going to be able to jump up into this lane at this point and use it. By the time this tower will go down and he has a chance to go top, the red buff will be gone. Unless obviously he didn't even mean to take it, he just ended up last hitting it. He's down the bottom lane. It. It, it looked Chopped it well then. Definitely on purpose. Anyway, what normally happens here in Europe in terms of lane swaps, is you shove it fast into the tower while your jungler is still farming because you don't need them. It's just three guys necessary to push it in or even dive if the guy's waiting. And then you want to leave the wave here for your top lane. So once tower goes down, you want to make sure Odana has a wave that's pushing back towards his tower. So he's now somewhat frozen and he gets a lot of farm. But you see giants are doing exactly the same on the bottom side. Only difference is they give the entire amount of gold from tower to Whirlip on his own. So they're not putting any of the top liners in a bad situation where they suddenly get denied a lot of CS. And you try and make sure they can catch up, seeing as they were falling behind the first few minutes. Oh, Whirlip, small advantage thanks to the buffer. A little bit of extra gold. We'll see whether or not Whirlip can translate that early help into split pushing power. Because Trundle is an absolute menace if he can get himself towards a Blade of King or a Tiamat. There's a Options you can go from the last yep. times you've seen Trundle top. Now we always got to look at how fast did they kill the tower and swap the lanes around because that can always prompt a potential dive with the teleport from either top lane. His bottom lane right now, 
Whirlip is expecting multiple members to show up, so he already got some backup from Frederick and Godfred, one on one in the top lane, as well between both Adri and uh, Odo Armin here. So no dive being set up from either side. Normally you want your top lane then to try and either shove out the wave, and then when your AD carry showed up against the enemy top lane, you push them into tower and you just dive him. I like, TP up on a minion and just dive him in, and therefore uh, that will create a, a lead. Relic's though looking for Frederick. He's not going to be able to oh, get the draw. Frederick is going to fail the pounce, forced to flash. Lulek's sonic wave was two and a half seconds from completion, so not able to chase up. But an early advantage over Frederick, and that's going to be a good confidence boost for Lulex and H2K. This is why he picked the Lee Sin. He want to try and match what Nidalee can do in the early game. He want to try and find him, get the deep words going. H2K always a team playing a lot around vision control. So we're going side stone, of course, on the Lee Sin. We don't always see that on some of the early junglers. I mean, Nidalee almost never goes for side stone. Now let's see though. Odom is getting a lot of free farm up here. What Giants is trying to do is say our mid game spike in terms of sieging and in terms of fighting around dragons can be very strong if Adri gets a good lead. If he gets to a fast 24, Corky as well scales really well with levels. So they're giving him the one-on-one -on -one lane. Same goes for Doamna though, and Shen is the same. You want to get that level six. Well, Deficio, I do want to step back and remember the last time Adri played Corky, a couple of weeks back against uh, Rocket. And let's just say those aggressive Valkyries into the enemy team yeah. did not help Giants or Adri's cause. So, Yes, this is a great start. He's got advantage over Hyanen already. We know the power spike of a mid-game Triforce Corky, but Audrey has to have been working in his position during the couple of weeks off and his decision-making so that the rest of the Giants team composition can get the time to poke and yeah. find the opportunities to secure dragons or towers. Audrey has never been the main carry for Giants, but they still need him to have an impact in these fights here, especially once you start reaching the late game where the AD carries become stronger and stronger for himself. This game though, and the fact he's on Corgi, I really like it. I think it's perfect for him. Give him mid-game impact, give him poke, and give him a safe champion. Well, he can also sit in a wave player, which can allow Godfred and Frederick then to roam together and try and fight some of this vision control coming for H2K. Now, they've swapped back to standard lanes. Notice here how top lane is going to be shoved in. That gives an easy back for to Amne and potentially can look for a play, because he's level six. Giants have really messed up here how they wanted to play the swap after. They could have sent the Trunkle top way earlier, kept him bottom lane, because they wanted to get the farm on Adri and the experience. So now he's level four inside of Whirlip. He's not going to do anything if Odamne decided to make a play on the bottom side. So, lots of pressure on Whirlip now to farm his way back into this game. Odamne is trying to get this wave reset, pushing it actually very aggressively with limited vision on the top half of the map. We did see Pepinero backed a moment or two ago. Upgraded that Hex Corp. Ryu's doing a similar scenario. We've not touched on those mid laners yet uh, at all, Deficio. But Ryu has already built himself up a 20 CS lead. Well, 18. At seven and a half minutes. Just purely from the laning phase. Great start from him, and not what we normally see from Pepinero. Such a fantastic laner. Victor more than fine in this matchup as well, especially in the early stages where there's not really any kill pressure from the RE pre-level 6, and yet, poor start from Pepinero, as you mentioned yourself, no action. Like, it's not like he's been pushed out by the jungle or anything. Set the bottom main, Atri is on his own at the moment. Flay doesn't connect, but the death sentence does! Explosive charge ticking away, that's a flash forward from Atri trying to get away. Ignite continues to tick, because Singh's going to trade back and forth. They got the heal and the flash in exchange for Ignite. Ryu is going in on Pepe Nero, going to sidestep that gravity field. The Spirit Rush doesn't work out. So, explosive, but nobody's down yet. So H2K making two plays in the lanes where Shen is not. So they had the ulti in case. Whirlip is still sitting up top here near his own tower, just trying to catch up in farm. Did hit level 6 on his own. Let's see if H2K wants to make a play. For now, it looks like they're happy saying, you know what, we got a flash. Let's reset the waves a little bit again. You can see the wave down bottom here from Janen. It's going to take a while before it hits Archery's side. You can even just... Oh, you trust Dana every time you last it's it. It's difficult. You kind of see <laughs> multiple minions die. You're like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> well, eventually this will be pushing back. But Hyonin grabbed himself that pickaxe and longsword. Wave's already <laughs> basically cleared. That explosive charge makes life ever so difficult. And for Whirlip, he also got the damage route for his first item. Pickaxe as well. Have you got the wraith? 
So this is one of the reasons I think Trundle is a smart pick into Shen. If you just look one on one, like just the two champions against each other. One, it's very standard to go for Tiamat Hydra. You can even go Blade second if you want. Let's see bottom lane first though. Well, Yonan has actually flashed forward. He's delivered himself a Shen. Audrey's in trouble. He's going to go down. Kasin gets the assist with the shield as well. Everyone trying to get it. Lulex just slightly too late with the shield. But nice little setup. The wave was pushed all the way in towards H2K. So Audrey overextending, and this is the joy of Shen. You TP down one side, you just TP back to your own lane, and you're keeping up the farm. But the Trundle pick still. You go for Tiamat, Hydra. You can even go Blade if you want to just purely focus on one on one -ing. So you get wave clear. You have fantastic sustain. Shen will never be able to kill you one on one, and you just keep pulling him, and this is the Whirlip style. He's the one versus one top laner. Always wants to be on a split pusher, and he's gonna win this war. It's about H2K and the rest of the team then, to beat Giants. So, for Giants, it's a slight departure from their summer split, sort of poke strategy, but this is still showing some growth. Giants from I'd say 2015. Poke poke enough. There's poke enough. Oh, fair enough, but, okay, let me rephrase that. They were playing around Pip and Nero's yes. poke. That was the focus. Now the focus is coming from jungle and AD carry. And we'll see whether or not Frederick and Audrey can land it. Right now, Frederick's got an uncontested dragon, taking advantage of H2K's back timing after securing first blood, and an easily secure dragon at almost 11 minutes. Yeah, so after we saw H2K invest TP, ulti, everything onto that one kill. Good response from Giants. Again, it's about Whirlip. How fast can he scale up? He got the Tiamat now. Remember, Shen is gonna Stack almost just pure defensive stats, maybe add in the Trinity Force, and that's about it. Rest is just tanky stats. Trundle is gonna have a fantastic day stealing that away. Yeah. And there's not a whole lot Odamne will be able to do on his own. Talking about investment though, Giants invested quite a lot into getting Audrey ahead. He had a CS advantage over Hyanan. But thanks to the way the lanes have played out over the last few minutes and that teleport gank, it is now Hyanan that had the first blood gold and has a small advantage. And you can see how defensive Audrey and Godfrey were playing in lane. Sitting way back, waiting for this wave to push in. Kasing, he's gonna get another death sentence. The box is down. Hyanan's jump does get interrupted, but the Monsoon's channeling. The explosive charge, flash ball from Kasing. He needs one more, he gets one more. Kasing and Hyanan, 2v2. Tristana is so, so strong once she gets just the BF sword completed. Now adding a pickaxe and a long sword. The fact that your E scales with physical damage is such a big boost for her in the mid game. So when you have these small trades and you manage to get a few auto attacks off and proc that bomb here, it is so tough to trade back with a Tristana. Then add in the fact that you can destroy towers. This is so massive for H2K. Ooh. If they manage to nullify the fact that they are four other members on the side of Giants and just be way stronger than them, they don't even care about Whirlip and what he can do in the top lane. He can split push all he wants. If the rest of the map is just falling, there's nothing Giants will be able to do from that. 2,000 gold down after H2K have secured their second tower and their second kill. And they've got CS advantages for their mid and AD carry. We do see Oduwamnes farming his way up as best he can. But Oduwamnes may play elsewhere on the map. Whirlib is firmly entrenched top until that little glimpse. Although the uh, Pillar of Ice ganks, not the most effective. They can be. But um, you need a gravity field, or you need some chase from Nidalee for that to really work. Yeah, that's going to be a massive problem for Giants if they keep falling behind. The fact that you have basically no engage, other than your trundle walking and being like, here's a pillar in your face, that's going to be enough for the rest of my team to follow up. Obviously, again, because they build more towards poking, you won't necessarily need the engage. The, the trick is you want H2K to be forced to engage on you, because you're sitting back there landing poke onto them. And then you ward the flanks and you make sure they can never get the proper engage. But because you lost that bottom lane so hard now, it will very quickly transition into other lanes, this time the mid lane. And you get pushed further and further back. H2K can start taking up the objectives. And then Giants have to walk out and try God, and engage. Godfrey, Godfrey, oh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it! He did it, he's down! Uh, difficult situation for Giants. So, they've lost all of their outer towers. They've given up all three of the kills in the game. And we've seen some deep-ish wards from H2K. I think that has to be the next priority. Get inside the jungle, ward it up, and then you can push one of those inner towers. But there's that trading you were talking about up top, the Fisher. Whirlib with the Chomp and the Frozen Domain and Trundle Passive. 
You're gonna need some help to push that troll from away from his bridge. That's true. Or you just say, I don't care about this troll. I don't need to walk over this bridge. I can pick another way. Bot lane, the mid lane. Both lanes are gonna be open for them. Look what HK is gonna do here. Once you start pushing and get up the deep vision, Giants are gonna be forced to sit under the tier two towers. Do you think H2K really care about that tower? You're gonna have a Shin ulti coming in on a Lee Sin, jumping in with an Ari with Loot and Deco. The first target they go for is die. That's it. Giants on their side, you have four extremely squishy members and then Trundle who's stuck in the top lane. That's his only way of being useful. That is in the top lane. Trundle only gets tanky if he can subjugate a tank as it stands. But that, that tank is gonna disappear. Yeah. It's gonna be like, bye. Yeah. And, and, but I even if they do get grouped up, even if they do have to defend and Whirlib's trundles around. Lulex has only got a warrior enchant jungle item for the time being, and Mercury. He's not particularly tanky. But he's farming himself up, and H2K. The lane swap went in their favor. They farmed themselves up a gold deed, and despite H2K not having the support of the fans at home, they are firmly in control of the first game of this best of five. Yeah, and sticking to, both teams honestly sticking to the styles we saw in, in the summer split. Poke, one four setup from Giants, very mid game focus from H2K with global map pressure and then at the same time the ability to deboard and create picks and also potentially dive later on. You have enough mobility to do it. Otherwise, just keep in mind with, with Tristana, if Giants is forced back to base, if they rotate too late because they cannot move through their own jungle, look here on the bottom side here. Six, sorry, five. Wards being placed from H2K already. Obviously setting up for the next dragon. Spawning in 30 seconds. If Giants want to move in and try and take it, Ari is going to sit in a bush and you're going to face check straight into a charm and you die. That's the way you always want to play Ari. Around mid-game objectives with vision control in your advantage. Giants will have to forfeit it. You talk about mid-game objectives. For Corky, it's getting a Triforce. Whirlib's got his Ravenous Hydra completed. We just saw that drop down. The average time for an Eye Edge is around 17 minutes and 15 seconds. Kianan picked his up well before that. Double checking my chat logs as see Kianan can see moving in, but that power dip that Tristana traditionally felt in the mid game is definitely going to be helped out by this very sizable gold lead. And if H2K can use this vision correctly, they may also get their hands on the first dragon. If Giants moves down to try and contest, they should die. H2K is already in position. Ryu needs to shove this wave and move up to join his team instantly. So they don't have vision of him on the bottom side. You can already see though Giants saying, you know what? We can't face check. There is zero control around this dragon. Just give it up. It's only the first one. 17 minutes in. It's not too bad. They have to make a play though on the other side of the map. But they're moving straight to top here. Oramna, he should expect this to happen. Yeah, but look at the cost. H2K are grouping in the middle lane, Deficio. They've got fantastic vision. It's, it's way too late for the Basically, if you know the dragon is spawning and you have to give it up, 30 seconds in advance, you need to start making the move towards the top side. You cannot do it once dragon has already gone down. God Fred's caught again happen? and he's down. Kasing and Ryu land the skill shots to get the fourth kill of the game. If you're too late to the party, you simply cannot play. Giants are just falling so far behind. And this is something that H2K used to do very well, but struggled to do effectively towards the end of the, sp the summer split. Coordinate themselves in the mid game to take advantage of their lead. If you go all the way back to that Fnatic loss five weeks ago, H2K had a strong lead against Fnatic, but then they started jungle invading, mm -hmm. they were on slightly different pages, and the team coordination ended up costing them. This is where we can see whether or not H2K have improved that. Oh, even stole blue buff. Whether or not H2K have improved the coordination to close games out with the lead. It's been a good start, but a simple start, I feel. There's not been a whole lot of uh, resistance coming in from Giants yet. The two kills down the bottom lane were set up by Kasing and, and Yarnin themselves. Obviously adding a bonus, maybe an old Omni joining once. That was the, the first lead that got the, the bot lane tower that allowed them to rotate into mid and take a second tower and really open up the map. And then also the fact that Giants kept Whirlip in the bottom lane for such a long time, he really fell behind. So he never got to be the big bullet. That's also why HK obviously lane swapped. I think Pepe Nero's in trouble. Oh, rest in Pepe Nero's. Let's find out. Chaos Storm comes out. The rocket jump goes forward. That teleport was cancelled by Whirlip. Pepe Nero will be able to escape or not. Ryu's looking for more. Got no spirit got Frederick, charges. Though. I didn't even see Frederick going down. 
Grump saw everything. It was horrible. Wow, that's that's terrible. Cold block. Well played by HTK. Distract everyone with Peppy and Grump and the rest of HTK find Frederick. <laughs> Didn't even help, man. Grump is so useless. <laughs> Anyhow, Whirlip will continue to do what he does best. He will get the tower for himself, but that's been about it so far for Giants. He's going for Blade second as well. We talked about earlier what he could do. It's just a pick from Ryu. This is what happens when you start losing your own jungle. You can never take these shortcuts, you know, down between the lanes where you just rush through your own jungle wow. because it's not yours. You should always expect them to be caught out and you have to start moving, you know, like from tower to tower, maybe near your own base, take the long routes around. And once you start having the slow rotations, you're always going to be a step too late. Yeah, that's an unfortunate situation for Giants to be in. They did at least get some of that gold lead back with their third tower of the game. And talking about gold leads, if you look at the stats on your screen, HTK tend to either lose or win hard pretty early on. You can see that seven games they're behind or 10 games they're ahead at 20. It's nearly the opposite for Giants. And these are the stats Analyst was talking about as well. Gold deficits at 20 for Giants Gaming. And it's funny because Giants in the spring split, when they got into the LCS, it was crazy games. Like we would have 20 kills almost the first 20 minutes going on. It was insanely aggressive ganks from Frederick. It was champions who could snowball lanes from Pippinero and from Whirlip, and he would just try and camp these lanes here. They always gave away a lot of kills as well, but at least there was a lot more action in the early game. And that was how they were trying to win games. Obviously, it didn't work out too well, seeing as they were down in the bottom of the standings. They changed it up, though. Followed the meta, more poke. Well, let's see if he can stay alive. Got for this here. Subjugate was thrown down onto Shen. He's healing and stealing the tanky stats, but you cannot survive a death sentence. H2K, pay the troll toll. And Giants are in trouble. Inner turret will be cracked open, but Pepinero is pushing down bottom. He is deciding to recall. Oh. Lulex is looking for more. Gets interrupted with the Howling Gale. Tower number four falls. And kill number six secured for HDK. Again for Giants, you have lost the jungle. 100% of the jungle belongs to H2K. So if you start pushing out in your lanes, you should expect them to move up and gank you. Pepe tried, realized he was way too late in the bottom lane though. So another kill for H2K. 6-0. And this is just... Been very clearly that H2K knew exactly what to do once they got that small lead from the first tower going down the bottom side. Or the second target because they got the lane so one and then the kill onto Adri. And there's been a full control. There's been so little Giants could do. It's okay, gonna have to keep that level of control up. Still have to get the most important objective, which is gonna be one of those inhibitors. The next or alternatively, a Baron, with the amount of vision and jungle control they have, they could make a play for that and try force Giants' hand. It's an option available to them, but you know, we go all the way back to the beginning of this game, and it was a lane swap scenario. And H2K just have significantly more experience in lane swaps. There are 18 LCS games. They were in a lane swap in 11 of them. Giants were in lane swaps in five of their regular season games. It's H2K was known for their lane swaps. Yes. They were famous for them until you cursed them on Apparently. the Telestrator. Audrey gets caught with the death sentence. Walking blind into a jungle where an H2K flag has been waving for 10 minutes. You cannot afford to make that mistake. I'll say it for you, Deficio. It's not Giants jungle anymore. It's not. It's not been for the last 10 minutes almost. H2K though, they have vision around Baron. Don't really have to risk it. Again, you are doing more than fine. Just keep creating picks left and right. It also looks even worse for Giants because they're running with a lot of poke. And when, once you start falling behind his poke here, you never get the chance to set up and start, you know, landing these long range shots here because there's wards behind you, there's flank options coming in and you can never save the group and use it. So poke always looks extremely weak if it falls behind in the early. Now let's see, Ryu. He's chasing, may not even need it. That's a good flash beautiful. over the taunt. Cleanse comes out, but it won't be enough. Ryu gets the kill with the last spirit rush. So we might as well say it already. Ryu in the spring split had a fairly, um, I wouldn't say poor performance in the regular split, but he had a fairly boring performance. I'm, he didn't do anything. He has a good word, innocuous. He was just there, Trevor. Yes. He was part of the team, he was there. Then we got into playoffs, and Ryu said, you know what? I want to go to Worlds. 
And he started killing people left and right. He got the most solo kills of any mid lane, any player in the ULCS in the playoffs. He started winning his lanes. We were like, what's going on here? Rio is looking super strong. Now we go back again. We look at the regular split. It's been okay, it's been better for Ryu, but still not really a top performance. Not what he can do. First game of playoffs, 5-0 Ari. He won his lane against the victor for Pippa Nero. A lane he has lost before. And uh, currently, Ryu is once again saying, I want to go to Worlds. Well, I, I want revenge. I distinctly remember Ryu's Ari against Giants last time. What was his final score? 14 and 0? 14 and 0, I believe. Uh, not bad. Not bad, if we do say so. Maybe ourselves. he just really hates Giants. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. But, you know, if, if you were watching from the beginning and we heard those video clips, Audrey actually had a quote in one of our very first video features saying that despite the fact they've lost to H2K, it actually gives Giants more experience than H2K get from beating Giants. Like, okay, maybe, maybe. But it also means at 7 and 0, H2K know exactly how to beat you. Yes. And you cannot play the same 1-4 strategy that you have been playing all summer without any upgrades and expect to win. Basically what H2K did for game 1, they said, okay, let's play the composition and the style we have used all split long, because it was good enough to beat Giants the other time you faced them, so let's just do it again for game 1, Focus the same people, play around the same stuff, and see if it works. If it works, do it the same for game two. There's yep. no reason to change it if it has worked so many times already versus one team. So it's up to Giants to be able to adapt or go in and say what word the mistake. Oh, Pepe, he's going to be down. Stand United's being channeled. Odo one there's looking for the taunt. Summon a heal will keep Godfrey alive for a second longer before the key strike secures it. The rest of H2K trying to get in from the side. That's a war dash. The kick will not get connected. Frederick's in trouble, but he will get bounced into the flay. The ah. flash death sentence just goes wide. Kasing will let it slide because that first pick Thresh is doing wonders for H2K, as is the Shen. For Giants, their first rotation of Corky Nidalee is a combined 0-5 at this point. Don't even want to blame it on the picks. Too many times in the early game did we see H2K manage to get kills on the bottom lane. Adri was stuck in situations where he felt like he had to try and push out waves. He then got ganked. Shen came in. Kasing came in. They got the kills. They got the towers. That started the whole snowball for H2K. And then, of course, Ryu winning that mid lane for himself. He's only been a record of more kills. 27 minutes? Yeah. Well, all of those kills and control led to a 27-minute Baron that was clean and uncontested. There is one inner turret lane tower remaining. Said turret In a tower. Turret lane Thank tower you. <laughs> There's one That's tier tower two remaining. tower remaining. Lulex may be able to get away with his life if Kasin can get in range. We did see the locket being thrown down, but the flank from Ryu is on. Spirit Rush is going to be chasing Willib. Wow, gets insta gibbed. And Hyun is looking for more blood. Godfred will try to deny the kill credit. Has there been enough time? Tower laser is. Trading. Jan is actually trying to recall, but I don't think he'll get there in time. And Godfrey will be able to suicide. But it's just... What were you doing there in the first place? Down 8k gold, trying to get some vision, and then losing well, your lives. I mean, at this point here, you got to try something. And you try maybe to surprise, see if you can get a pick on Lulix in there. They almost got him down. Otherwise, what you do as a team in a best out of five situation, when you have such a poor first game where there's such a clear difference, you kind of stop thinking about the current game and talk about what, what went wrong. I mean, what's going to happen next game? They're on red side again for game two, so they can say, was it the pick and ban phase? Or were we happy enough with the picks? It was more we made a few key mistakes in the early game. You sit and talk through all that stuff here, and you make sure for the next game that the same mistakes won't happen. Because right now, the chance of you coming back is so, so low. It's better to be more ready for next game. So, wave clear is relatively strong with Giants, but they can't defend multiple waves. Look, middle inhibitor turret almost down. Death Sentence connects. Kasing follows up with a flay. Tower will fall shortly, as does Whirlip. Tower goes down as a flash away from Pepe Nero. Will not keep him alive. Frederick follows suit. H2K have got the tower. Have got the inhibitor. They've got some minions conga lining in. And this could be the first game in the series. H2K did not give up a single death in 30 minutes and they will be taking down Giants Nexus. 
eight and zero in the last few times they've played. They even get Audrey on the fountain. Domination. Yeah. From the number three seed. This completely destroys your confidence. You're preparing for this best out of five in two weeks. You had to plan ready. I feel like this is what we're going to do in game one. We believe this is the best we can do. Or well, at least this is the, the first conversation we want to show. And 30 minutes later, yeah, you didn't even get a single kill. H2K really took advantage of the lead they garnered from the lane swap. It was fairly small, but they kept chipping away, chipping away, and eventually Giants couldn't do anything. Is this indicative of how this rest of the series is going to go? Or do you think this is just quarterfinal nerves, game one? I feel like we've seen this before between these two teams. Last time again they faced each other, it was the same kind of game. 32 minutes, completely one-sided on the side of H2K. Giants have to step up that early to mid-game. They have to change it around. We're going to head over to the analyst desk to take a look at just how decisive h 